Okay, good morning everyone. I am Sujit from IIIT Bangalore. I am, uh, Lapata was uh, created to tell the story of the IASC, typical IASC researchers, day-to-day -day, uh, experiences, their uh, difficulties, the, the troubles they face, the, uh, in, a, in a slightly humorous manner. Now, uh, uh, Lapata was trying to be more ambitious, broader, and trying to address the uh, issues of the entire research community, in fact, the entire uh, academic community, not just in, in India, but uh, uh, around the world. Okay? Something uh, also had started changing in me as I continued drawing the Lapata cartoons. Uh, and that was, uh, there was this growing passion to tell the story about academic world to the rest of the world. You know, uh, even though all of us have at some point or the other been associated with academics either as students or teachers, uh, the unfortunate reality is that when there are conversations about academia, right, most of the times it tends to become a little limited, you know, employment, uh, how it is getting outdated, whether our students are employable or not. We look at academia as a system which is supposed to produce employable graduates and, you know, uh, it's a very transactional business-like view that we have got about academia. What often gets left out from these conversations is the fact that academia is an entire world, okay? It's inhabited by people, people like you and me, who go through daily experiences just like you. You know, they have ambitions, they have aspirations, they have frustrations, they have all sorts of emotional experiences. You know, somehow that particular part of the conversation, conversation gets left out. So, it was a growing uh, intention in me to try to bring out this particular human aspect of academia through my humor and cartoons. You know, so that's been the main running theme of... Uh, so, the first story. The first story comes from one of my friends. Uh, he comes from a small town which has no academic or uh, educational culture there. Okay? Uh, he uh, happened to do his PhD in IIC. Uh, and once he traveled back to his uh, hometown while he was doing his PhD. Uh, and uh, to receive him came one of his childhood friends who, uh, who was a business person there, had done very well in his life. You know, he had uh, scored a, a very impressive 52% in his uh, 12th class and then had decided that he, has, he had studies enough, studied enough and uh, he had taken up his family business, done very well. So, after receiving him from uh, the, uh, the station, he uh, took him around, showed him all the uh, uh, achievements that he had had in his, uh, you know, in his career. Uh, he was driving a, la a huge car, he was dressed uh, in expensive clothes and stuff like that. M my uh, friend, on the other hand, had stepped out of the sleeper class of a train, uh, was very much in his uh, plain clothes, uh, chapels, you know, uh, just how a typical PhD student would uh, look like, okay? So they went around for some time conversing in a happy-go-lucky uh, mode, uh, remembering their childhood experiences, etc., etc. And uh, at some point, uh, that host friend, the friend of my friend, he, he uh, dropped this question. So uh, what are you doing these days, okay? So my friend with a tinge of pride said that, uh, you know, I'm doing a PhD in IIC, which is one of the best institutes of the country. Okay. So this friend of his who uh, had been very uh, jovial and pleasant so far, suddenly got very serious. Okay. Uh, and kept quite, uh, very quiet for some time. And then uh, after not being able to contain his, uh, uh, what do you say, suspicion or uh, doubt for some time, he eventually asked this question. If I remember correctly, you used to be good in studies, no, when we were in school, then why did you do PhD? Okay? So, this, this is, I feel, you know, immensely hilarious as well as extremely sad picture of what we think of PhD, the highest degree that is available anywhere in the planet. Is in the uh, audience will probably be able to identify with this a lot. If, if a woman uh, decides to go ahead and pursue her uh, higher education, she meets with all sorts of uh, hurdles. Okay? And mostly so 
from those people who love her the most. This father and uh, daughter sitting in the park, you know, and the father is basically uh, trying to address that puppy there because nobody else is probably listening to him and he's saying that see uh, she has done her, her PG she should be fine why is she now thinking about doing a PhD you know I told her you know you get married and do whatever you want in your, your husband's house okay so uh, this is another thing and I'm sure many of the uh, people in the uh, ladies in the audience would probably have heard it from some or the other person uh, among the, her well-wishers okay so uh, of course, our lady here is very assertive. She says, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to anyway do my PhD, don't worry. And so that, that's one uh, cartoon. Here is another one. Uh, here is another one. Uh, so people think that, uh, uh, you know, uh, academics is uh, full of vacations. We are known to have long vacations, right? What they don't understand is that our teaching semesters are so busy that all the work that we are supposed to do in the uh, teaching semesters and which we are not able to do because of lack of time has to be done during our vacations, okay? Be it evaluation, project proposals, mentoring, uh, conference attending, uh, uh, organizing events like this, so on and so forth. You know, these are all parts of uh, an academician's uh, daily uh, activities, daily responsibilities and they have to be done during your uh, uh, and uh, that's why, you know, this, this fat guy here is basically all those work and this bench is my vacation and this bench is my vacation and uh, he's like, you know, Swalp adjust Mari kind of uh, attitude. Uh, he's pushing, pushing and taking away all the space on, in my, into my vacation, you know, so it's a metaphorical uh, representation. Uh, yeah. So this kind of a biased view from people, we uh, try to laugh it off, you know, we take it in our stride and uh, uh, smile or maybe just ignore it. And here is uh, probably one of the funniest things that you see, you know, complete transformation that you see. And, uh, you know, this is how uh, a typical student looks like when he walks into one of your lectures, right? Uh, he will be, uh, you know, shabbily dressed in his shorts and talking all sorts of uh, local language stuff, you know, and you will think how this person is ever going to face the world, big bad world, you know, when uh, he meets his employers and stuff like that. But again, that's a mistake because when it is the day of campus interview, he's completely transformed. These are some of the stories about our students. Uh, yeah, so I will, I will skip this, uh, this section, this pandemic section. Uh, yeah, so... So these are all, you know, I'm poking fun at uh, academics, the academic world, inside, outside, everyone. But then uh, I would not leave you uh, thinking that academics is all about absurdities and funny stuff. Uh, being an academician is an extremely rewarding experience. Okay? And I would like to show some glimpses before I leave you. We teach, right? Uh, Every lecture, you know, most of the times many of the students are sleeping or busy with their phones. But there are some students in some corners. You, you can see that they are listening intently. What you are trying to give them is affecting them. There is a glint of surprise, curiosity in their eyes. Right? And that one experience is enough for many of us to go day after day to the lecture hall and you know, toilet, uh, toilet away, uh, giving lectures and stuff like that, okay? So that's one of the rewarding experiences of being a teacher. The other rewarding experience is when our uh, students achieve something, right? So here uh, I, I see myself uh, standing with my uh, PhD student, Nikila. She has just graduated and the caption there says that, you know, a sapling planted many years ago uh, has turned to a lush green tree. So the tree that you see in the background was planted by me a few years back and it is about that but you can see that the met metaphor also applies to Nikila. Great, uh, you know, takeaways from being an academician. Uh, also one of the uh, events that probably ha doesn't happen that often but does happen is when we are able to uh, mentor some, some student who is probably in some sort of trouble, okay, uh, and give him a helping hand at the right moment and that turns things around for him or her and he eventually uh, 
goes ahead to make it big in his life. Okay, so that also is one of the things that is uh, you know a pride, proud privilege of being a teacher, right? And then the last thing that I would like to show you is this picture, which shows a, a bunch of uh, uh, blind school children working on this device called Hexis. Okay, uh, Hexis is a refreshable Braille display device on on which I worked a few years back, and uh, it is now being uh, commercially manufactured by a startup company, uh, uh, award-winning startup company called Wemby. Every once in a while, we are able to make this kind of impact as academicians. We are not, not bounded by quarterly projections, you know, line of business, profit margins, so on and so forth of our organizations. As long as the idea is good and we are able to make it work, we, are, uh, we get applauses for that. You know? So that is also one of the great benefits of being in the academic world. There are two ideas that I want to leave you with. First of all, the whole objective here connects back to the passion that I mentioned to you earlier about, which is to tell you human stories about the academic world. Okay? One thing that I would like you all to remember when you, you know, walk out of this place is that academic world is not a system which is producing employable graduates for the world. No, it is not just that. It is of course that, but it's more than that. It's a place where humans live and they go through the similar kind of grinds that every one of you is going through. Okay? That's one story that I wanted to tell through my cartoons. So that's idea number one that I wanted to leave you with. And the idea number two is probably the central point that uh, I want all of you to remember. One thing that I would like you to remember is this. Okay? It's a slight generalization of the first idea. So today, the world is kind of increasingly getting fragmented. Uh, because we are all so busy in our lives, uh, we hardly get time to step out of our own limited sphere of activities and take genuine interest in what other people are doing. Okay? And this is leading to uh, some sort of fragmentation of, of the world, the society, which in my opinion is not a very good thing. Okay? And this should change. And if you happen to be a professional, who has deep insight about one particular professional sphere of activity. And on top of that, if you also happen to be a person blessed with some sort of artistic capabilities, okay, be it, in my case it is cartooning, but in somebody else it could be writing, it could be painting, it could be uh, dance, uh, music, uh, dramatics, anything, public speaking, whatever it might be. Okay? If you have that as an additional thing apart from your professional insights, you can combine them together in a very powerful manner to tell human stories about your sphere of activity to the world outside. Okay? And I feel that such stories play a very important role in creating a more connected world where people do not look at each other in a business-like or transactional manner but connect with them like human beings. And I think in this world, which is getting increasingly fragmented because of our being so busy, that would be a very good and welcome change. So this is the idea that I wanted to leave you with. Thank you for your patience.